It's market day here in Dasa, and we are on the hunt for tomatoes. Buongiorno. 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 Chilo di buoni pomodori per sole. Buoni, buonissimi. Oggi dobbiamo fare la pasta col pomodoro. Pomodoro. Allora, un chilo. Ok, we have our tomatoes. What are these? San Marzano? These are San Marzano tomatoes. And everyone knows in the world that they are the best. <laughs> He doesn't want to become tomato sauce. <laughs> Everyone in the world knows that uh, San Marzano tomatoes are the best tomatoes for tomato sauce. But we don't just have these tomatoes, we have these tomatoes, and these tomatoes, and these tomatoes. And lest I forget, these tomatoes. What are we gonna do with all these tomatoes today, Eva? We are going to make the most tomato pasta in the world. More tomato than this, it can't exist. <laughs> I have been on the biggest tomato kick recently, more so than usual. Uh, Mama Rosa made some tomato sauce the other day and I tasted it and it was just mind-blowingly good. It was the best tomato sauce I've ever had and I was like, what did you do differently? Like, what, what did you do to this? She was like, it's just the tomatoes. They're in season. That's what's in season. This is my first summer in Italy, and it's my first time being here in tomato season. Let's do this. Let's make the ultimate tomato pasta. If you watched this channel before, you saw me making a lot of tomato sauce. And usually I always use the canned tomatoes. And why use canned tomatoes? Because a, canned to a good canned tomatoes is always better than a bad fresh tomatoes. But now I'm in Italy and I'm so lucky to have one of the best tomatoes in the world. So I'm going to use these fresh tomatoes and do my sauce from scratch. The first step is just to cut or break the tomatoes in a pot. We don't need at this stage not olive oil, no salt, no water, just pure amazing fresh tomatoes. We turn on the heat at medium temperature, we cover our tomatoes and we wait until they start to boiling to release the water and start to dissolve. I will show you later. While the San Marzano tomato are cooking, now we are going to work on the cherry tomatoes. Also here, it's very important that uh, you find, you buy, you find a very good cherry tomatoes. Are you gonna bake these? See, Harper, I'm going to bake my cherry tomatoes. Okay. Be because we know, we already discovered how good they are when they are baked. That is true. Olive oil. Salt. A pinch of sugar, but a pinch. Not the old bag, though. Pinch. Some fresh basil. And just a clove of garlic. We are going to in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius. That's in Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't know, I forget. <laughs> As you can see, the tomatoes are cooking. They are releasing the water. So we leave them another two minutes and then we can mill, press, squish, 
Smusha. In Italian we say possiamo passarli. The first thing that you should understand is uh, the delicious smell that comes from uh, these tomatoes. And it smells like September in Italy, because September is the month in which uh, every southern Italian we prepare our tomatoes, uh, canned uh, fresh tomatoes. So <laughs> I don't know how to speak English anymore. You make tomato puree and bottle it. Bravo. <laughs> Yeah, don't be leaving any of that tomato on the table. No, that uh, is the best part. Now I'm removing all the skin, more or less all the skin, because I need to, how do you say, mill? Mill. Mill some other tomatoes. Here we have another wonderful Italian tomato. This is Pizzutello. Now the Pizzutello tomatoes uh, grows just grow just on the Vesuvius mountain. Now I'm not going to use them fresh because it's not possible more or less to find them out of Napoli. In the rest of Italy we can find them in a jar. But believe me, they are pretty amazing also in this shape. I know that it's difficult to find them in Italy and I can imagine how difficult it is to find them in America or in another part of the world. So if you can't find the pizzutello, try to find the best cherry tomato in a can. You can uh, look at the uh, world market, usually they have, or maybe a specialized Italian grocery shop, they can have some good option. I can eat just with a spoon like that. Ooh. Oh. Whoa. It's a punch of flavor. That's wild. That's really unlike anything I've ever tasted. I know, they are uh, so, so good. And one of the best things about the, this kind of tomatoes is that they, they stay fresh for at least five, six, seven months in Napoli, for example, is that the tradition is to hang them, maybe for sure you saw in Napoli. Yeah, I remember those. And they are uh, pomodori pizzutelli. Now is the moment in which we can cook our tomato sauce. We season with olive oil. Salt, fresh basil, and garlic. That's all you need to have an amazing tomato sauce. And now we put this on the stove, medium low heat. After 40-45 minutes, our cherry tomatoes should look like them. The smell that there is in this kitchen right now, it's amazing. Now is the moment to make the pasta. And I'm going to make a pasta that is inspired by peachy. Peachy is this Tuscan pasta that resembles in a shape how we define a thicker, a very thick spaghetto. Because it's a tomato pasta, I'm going to do also the pasta with tomatoes. I'm going to use some tomato paste. Usually you know that the fresh pasta is made just with flour and egg or flour and water. I don't use olive oil, but because this is an exception, I'm going to use also some olive oil. Now we cut a small piece of our dough 
Remember always to cover uh, the rest of your pasta, otherwise it will uh, dry out too fast uh, and uh, it will be not good. Good. <laughs> and now we roll uh, as a snake. We cut small pieces. So be sure that uh, your snake uh, measure like my pinky. Your pinky specifically, always. My pinky, yes, this is the measure, my pinky. And then uh, you roll them. And you have your peach, your pigeon. Picho? Picho, your pigeon. All right, we have a whole bunch of tomato pasta, but I feel like we're still missing some tomato. And here we have our yellow cherry tomatoes. How do you call it? Pomodorini datterino in English? I don't know. I don't know, but I do know that you can get those canned in America. See, you can because we did. I did it. <laughs> I assume you're just cooking these like any other tomato sauce. Nothing special. When the tomato is good, you don't need nothing special. Now that we have all our tomatoes ready, it's time to make the pasta. So the water is boiling and I'm going to assemble the sauce. Oh, those are going in the sauce? These are going also in the sauce. The pasta is still al dente and what I'm going to do now is transfer the pasta in the sauce and finish cooking, cook it in the sauce. I haven't even tasted this yet, and I already know that this is the most tomato-y tomato pasta I've ever seen. I also can tell from the smell, Arthur. It smells incredible in here. It smells like very good tomatoes. <laughs> it's been sort of agonizing as you've been making it. So, Arthur. All right, let's try it. Pay attention because this kind of pasta... <laughs> oh, it's a little messy, yeah. Oh, you can feel on the fork the peachy. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. I'm so glad we did this. Now, if you don't like tomatoes, this is not the pasta for you. But if you like tomatoes... This is the pasta for you. I don't think that exists a pasta better than this. Oh my gosh. There's so much tomato flavor in here, but different kinds because you have all these different types of tomatoes and forms of tomatoes. You can taste the sweet of the fresh tomato sauce. 
that is sweeter than normal because of the pizzutello. But then you have the acidic of the yellow one because it's a little bit more acidic. And then you have the concentrated flavor of the cherry tomatoes. Um, not to mention the tomatoey pasta. That tastes like tomatoes. <laughs> also, peachy. Si. Peachy is amazing. Peachy is a good shape of pasta if you like to bite into your pasta. If you are an angel lover, this doesn't work. But if, like me and him, we like the pasta where you bite into it, the pasta cayusa, this is the way to go. And it's more cayusa because I had the semolina flour. Ah, ah, Tuscany is up in arms. <laughs> I know, but I like the southern Italian style of pasta. Well, that's why we shouldn't call this peachy. No, no. We should call it, what's it? Pom pomici? <laughs> For me, I like pomici. Pomici? We've invented a new kind of pasta, pomici. Do you want to explain how this pasta dish came about and why we did this today? Okay, all the world knows how we love our spaghetti with tomato sauce. So it's like some years that this chef in Italy, they want to create something a little bit different than a, no a normal tomato sauce. So they invented this pasta, tre pomodori, pasta e quattro pomodori. And today we made pasta ai cinque pomodori. <laughs> Taking things up a notch. Yeah, because they normally use like what, spaghetti? See, usually they use spaghetti or they use paccheri. Which you could do and it would be great, but this but is... But you will not have the cinque pomodori pasta because we used five to me, five kinds Il of vero. pasta. Il vero, cinque pomodori pasta. Pasta ai cinque pomodori. That's it. The next step is just if you had the green tomatoes. <laughs> Now we gotta start over, Ava. Okay guys, we need to go find some green tomatoes and keep working on this. But in the meantime, this is a fantastic recipe and we'll put a link down below and uh, you should give it a shot. Especially if you like tomatoes, then you definitely need to give this a shot. I want to eat all of it there, but... <laughs> oh, we're going to, don't worry. There's still some more in the pot. I know. It's not gonna be there much longer. Speaking of incredible pasta dishes that everyone should try, this pasta grammarian made an amazing looking pasta a la pecorara. It is, I think, our shared favorite Roman pasta. Is that fair to say? No, you like a matriciana because it has tomatoes in it. Of course. Anyway, it's my favorite. No, I really like pecorara much more than carbonara. Yes, that matriciana is over the top because, because of the tomatoes. Yeah. If you try any of our recipes, tag us in a picture on Facebook or Instagram at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see what you cook. All right, guys, we got some pasta to eat and some green tomatoes to find. So we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. Okay, I have a stupid question. Are green tomatoes a type of tomato or are they tomatoes that aren't ripe yet? What we use for green tomatoes is the last tomatoes on the plant that they are not, they don't have time to be mature. Oh, like at the end of the season? Mm -hmm. Oh, so we gotta wait a little bit. Waiting with this kind of pasta. Yeah, I'm okay. fine, I'm fine, we'll wait. 